Leave it to Beaver, Tacos, and WikiLeaks are all on this day. Hey, welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is October 4th, 2021. It is the 277th day of the year. There are 88 days left in 2021. It is the 40th Monday in the 41st week. It is the 13th day of fall. We got 78 days until winter. That still seems really strange to me. Winter seems like it should be right around the corner. I don't know. Anyway, if today's your birthday, your birthstone is still an opal. And there are 84 days left until Christmas. Today is National Taco Day. National Taco Day celebrates the traditional Mexican dish consisting of tortilla wrapped or folded around either meat or vegetables, topped with garnishes like lettuce, tomatoes, sour cream, cilantro, salsa, all that good stuff. Tacos aren't exclusive to the United States and Mexico. It is everywhere. Every place you go, somebody is making a taco. Sometimes it's a little different depending on where you are on the globe. I mean, they add different things depending on what kind of vegetables or meat they have in that area. Here in Portland, Oregon, I got tacos one day that had zucchini in it. They, it wasn't like I ordered some special taco. I just ordered a chicken taco and they added zucchini. We have a lot of zucchini and things like pumpkins and squash up here in the Pacific Northwest, so they end up making their way into different things. Look at the pumpkin spice latte. Where do you think that came from? National Taco Day started in 2007. Now, Mexico actually has their own, Dia del Taco. It's not a restaurant. It's a taco celebration on March 31st, but here in the U.S., we do it on October 4th. All right, let's see what else has gone down on October 4th. 1927, Gutzoff Borglum begins sculpting Mount Rushmore. Sorry if I butchered that name. I've tried it like five times. I, I can't seem to get it right. Anyway, the sculpture was started in 1927, and they kept sculpting it through 1941. It wasn't him alone. I mean, they were blowing dynamite and chisels and everything else. It's not like he was up there by himself. Now, they say they finished it in 1941, but they had plans of it being bigger. So really, it's still kind of not finished. 1941, Norman Rockwell's Willie Gillis character debuts on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. 1957, Sputnik 1 becomes the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. Yes, the Russians beat us to the satellite game. 1960, an airliner crashes on takeoff from Boston Logan International Airport, killing 62 people. 1997, the second largest cash robbery in U.S. history occurs in North Carolina. The Loomis Fargo bank robbery was a robbery of $17.3 million in cash from the Charlotte, North Carolina Regional Office Vault of Loomis. Miss Fargo and company. This all happened on the evening of October 4th, 1997, and the people that did it were a bag of idiots. Oh my God. So I watched this whole thing on it, and basically one guy worked in the vault, and this guy that thought he was like this North Carolina godfather of crime, he's like a petty criminal. Anyway, he set this whole thing up with a girl that used to work at the Wells Fargo place, and a guy that was still working there. They basically emptied this vault out of like $17.3 million and uh, disabled all the cameras. They didn't realize the vault had an actual camera, so they knew who collected all the money. They even found the van that they used to steal the money with. They took so much money, they couldn't take it all. They had to leave like $5 million behind. And then these idiots went on a shopping spree and basically just put themselves in jail because they couldn't do the right thing and just hold off on big purchases. One of the wives of the guys involved in this went into the bank and asked how much money could she deposit an account daily without having the authorities informed, like the federal government, the FBI, or whatever. Well, what she didn't know is when someone asks that question, the bank has to tell the FBI. These idiots weren't even smart enough to stash the money. They had like every drawer and every shelf in their new house they just bought filled with cash. Just stacks and stacks of 20s. Bunch of idiots. Two thousand six WikiLeaks is launched. If you don't know what WikiLeaks is, it's a website that has serious encryption and all that. That if you have secret documents, maybe you work for a company that's doing something shady. Let's say it's a pharmaceutical company that's actually ripping people off or not delivering what they said. Or if it's the government hiding some stuff and you have access to that information and you want to get it out to the public, you give it to WikiLeaks. They verify it as best they can and then they publish it. It's not to be confused with Wikipedia. A lot of people think they're the same thing. They're nothing alike. They're nothing to do with each other. This is like the official explanation of what WikiLeaks is. WikiLeaks is an organization that facilitates the anonymous leaking of secret information through its website. WikiLeaks was started by Julian Assange, whose real name is Julian Paul Hawkins. 
He is an Australian editor, publisher, and activist who really got his start as a hacker back when he was 16 years old in 1987. In the late 80s and early 90s, he had hacked the Pentagon, NASA, Motorola, Xerox, the U.S. Navy. But in 1991, he was caught hacking into a Canadian company called Nortel. In 1993, he went to work for the Victoria Police Child Exploitation Unit in Australia to prosecute individuals responsible for publishing and distributing, you know, kid stuff. Can't say what it is or I'll get in trouble and my video will be demonetized. But you know what I'm talking about. In 2010 is when the world got to know WikiLeaks. They had published some video that was taken by Bradley Manning, who was an intelligence soldier from the United States. And it was pretty ugly footage of the war and unarmed people in Baghdad being shot up by helicopters. A whole bunch of other stuff came out of that, and it was pretty bad. In 2014, they published some of Edward Snowden stuff, and it just kept going and going. And obviously, this, as you can imagine, made the United States and a bunch of other countries very angry. But because of different laws in Sweden and Iceland and the United States, where he had all his servers and got all his information, he was somewhat protected. I'm not going to bore you with all the ins and outs of this because it is a long and lengthy story to what happened next. But Swedish authorities charges against him and he, while living in London, fled to the Ecuadorian embassy where he got asylum for quite a long time. Now, the charges that were brought up against him eventually fell apart because there was really not any serious evidence. There's a lot of conspiracies that go into this, but a lot of people think it was the United States putting pressure on Sweden and different countries to get him extradited to the United States. So from 2012 to 2019, he lived in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. He eventually was kicked out of the embassy by the Ecuadorian government because apparently he breached some agreement they had and he was taken into custody by the British government where he still is. He hasn't been extradited. He's been living at a maximum security prison in London since April of 2019. WikiLeaks is still going on. I mean, even through his time where he wasn't involved with the website, they continue to do their work, even publishing stuff in 2016 about how the DNC was actually biased against Bernie Sanders. The head of the DNC resigned right after those things were published. There is so much that goes into this. If you get a chance, there's plenty of great YouTube videos on WikiLeaks and how it works and what's going on with it. It is a long and complicated story, but it's worth learning about. Movies released on October 4th. Not a movie, but a TV show. 1957, Leave it to Beaver premieres. The show ran for six seasons and aired a total of 234 episodes on CBS. And if you want to feel old, Jerry Mathers, who played the Beaver, is now 73, and his brother Wally, Tony Dow, is 76. Sadly, Ken Osmond, who played Eddie Haskell, who was kind of the creepy dude on the show, he just passed away in 2020 at the age of 76. Born on October 4th, 1989, Dakota Johnson. She's an American actress and model. She is best known for the movie Fifty Shades. She's also the daughter of Don Johnson and Melody Griffin. I never watched Fifty Shades of Grey or whatever it was, but I heard it was very steamy. Maybe I should watch it. I don't know. I just heard every female I work with at Comcast talk endlessly about this movie. Died on October 4th, 1970, Janis Joplin. On Sunday evening, October 4th, 1970, Janis Joplin was found dead on the floor of her hotel room by her road manager and close friend, John Byrne Cook. Alcohol was present, but drugs seemed to not be a factor at the time. In a book, it is said that the evidence of drug paraphernalia was taken away from the scene and removed before anyone got there. I mean, she was known for heavy drinking and heavy drug use, so it would not shock anyone. I think back in 1970, when she was discovered and it was said that there was no drugs there, I think that was more shocking to people. It's too bad. She's part of the 27 Club. If you don't know what the 27 Club is, I'll tell you. I just talked about it on one of my other videos on my other channel. But anyway, the 27 Club is musicians and artists that died at the age of 27. And this list is pretty impressive and lengthy. Amy Winehouse, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, Jim Morrison, Brian Jones. Some of the lesser known ones were Alan Blind Al Wilson. He was in the band 
Canned Heat, Mia Zapata, who I actually, that's why I talked about her just recently. Her death uh, happened in Seattle. She was the lead singer of a band called The Gets. And thanks to DNA, the guy who killed her was finally caught many years later. Another a local guy from where I grew up, but there's a guy named D Boone. He was in a band called The Minutemen. They came out of uh, San Pedro, California, which is like the next city over from where I grew up. Uh, he died at the age of 27 too. There's a lot more, but those are some of the bigger ones. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.